Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between sigma and pi bonds. And the difference is found in the way that the orbitals overlap with each other. So with a sigma bond, a sigma bond, we have s and p orbitals that overlap with each other along the bond axis. And what that means is that if I had two nuclei, let's say there's one here and one here, the s and p orbitals are overlapping along this bonding axis. So there's a few different ways that this can occur. We can have s orbitals that overlap with each other. We can have two p orbitals that overlap with each other. Or we could have a mix of an s and p orbital that overlaps with each other. But the thing is, they have to overlap along this bond axis. And one thing to remember as well is that the electron density or where the electrons are found in this bonding is actually between the two nuclei of the bonded atoms, which is what you would expect. So the electron density is between the two nuclei of the bonding atoms. And one other thing to note as well is that all single bonds, all single bonds are sigma bonds. All single bonds are sigma bonds. So again, the orbitals will overlap along the axis of the nucleus and all single bonds are actually sigma bonds. So if you were given something like CH4, and you were told to identify the number of sigma bonds in this molecule, all you have to do is draw it out, carbon, hydrogen on either side. And you look at your molecule and you say, okay, these are all single bonds. So there are four sigma bonds in this molecule. Pi bonds are a little bit different. Pi bonds form when two p orbitals, so only p orbitals, overlap sideways or in the opposite direction of the bonding axis. So pi bonds are only between p orbitals and it, they occur when p orbitals overlap sideways. And what that means, so again, if we had our bonding axis here, instead of overlapping long ways, like the tail of one p orbital hits the tail of another p orbital, it actually looks like this, and pi bond will form here between the two p orbitals. So you would get something that looks more like this. Both of those p orbitals have overlapped with each other, and if the nucleus is here somewhere in the middle, the electron density is actually on either side of those p orbitals. So you have an electron density above and below the nucleus. So remember with sigma bonds, the electron density is right in between the two nuclei. But with pi bonds, the electron density has shifted away from the nucleus. And this actually does make pi bonds weaker. Pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds because the electron density is not right in between the two nuclei. And one other thing to note as well is that pi bonds will actually form alongside of a sigma bond. Alongside of a sigma bond. So you would never have a pi bond by itself. It will always be with a sigma bond. So that means that pi bonds are only found in double and triple bonds double and triple bonds. So if you have a double bond, if you have a double bond, something like this, one of those is a sigma bond and the other one is a pi bond. So you could label those as sigma and pi. And if you were asked to label, the general rule of thumb is that the sigma will go on top and the pi will go on bottom. And with a triple bond, if you had something like nitrogen, triple bonded to itself. The sigma bond again would be on top and the two other bonds would be pi bonds. So pi bonds never form by themselves. It's the overlap of p orbitals sideways. And if you have a double bond, one is sigma and one is pi. 
in a triple bond, one is sigma and the other two are pi. So what if you were given something like C2H4 and you were asked to identify how many sigma and pi bonds there were in the sample? You could draw it out. We have two carbons and four hydrogens. I know each carbon has to have four bonds. So we can put two hydrogens on either side, which means there does have to ha be a double bond here in the middle. All of my single bonds are sigma bonds. So I can label all of those as sigma, 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 sigma. The bond on top of my double bond will be sigma and on the bottom will be pi because remember a double bond contains one sigma and one pi bond. What if you were given something like C2H2? So we would draw out, we have two carbons, two hydrogens, we can put one on either side. Our carbon still needs three bonds, both of them, so that will be a triple bond. We know the single bonds are always going to be sigma bonds. And then with the triple bond, the top will be sigma and the bottom two will be pi bonds. I hope this was helpful. If you need further clarification, make sure and let me know. Again, the easiest way to tell the two apart, sigma will always be single bonds. Pi bonds are only found in double and triple bonds. So thank you so much for stopping by.